Hi, this is Jason Jorgensen, and once again, time for Husker Chat, brought to you by Acres Equipment. As always, we're joined by Sean Callahan, the publisher of Husker Online, as we talk Husker football. Sean, we have a win to talk about. It had, it had been a while, but uh, I thought, uh, all things considered, Saturday night went pretty well for Coach Rule and the Huskers. Yeah, it was everything we kind of talked about, Jason. I think Nebraska fans wanted to see a clean game executed you know, on all three phases. And we saw that collectively. I mean, Nebraska's offense comes out with a scripted drive, scores right away. Uh, the defense gets a three and out. Then the offense has the fumble, but the defense responds, holds a, to a field goal. I thought that was a big early statement that the defense was going to be a problem for Northern Illinois the rest of the way. And then Brian Buschini punts a ball down to the one. Uh, that allowed Nebraska to get a 14-3 to lead at halftime. And the third quarter, to me, was about third downs. Nebraska converted four straight third downs on a 14-play scoring drive that ate up nearly eight minutes. Um, Nebraska held the ball for 20, uh, I think it was 23 plays and a better part of 12 minutes of the third quarter. And I thought that was kind of the quarter where they just took over. The defense stayed fresh. The offense wore them down. And boom, and Heiner Carberg finished it off, and, and they got that run of scores there to close out the game. It seems to me that if you get that kind of quarterback play, and, and he certainly did some nice things on Saturday night, that, that that's a recipe that could work this year. Uh, th- that that type of game could, could lead to some victories for Nebraska. Yeah, it's going to be interesting how they manage this because Jeff Sims on Tuesday this week, and they go hard on Tuesday, Wednesdays, took 50 to 55% of the snaps, according to Marcus Satterfield. Um, so what does that mean? I mean, is he going to be the guy this week? Are they going to go with Harburg? Are they going to play them both? Uh, with the situation at running back with Gabe Urban Jr. out for the year, Ramir Johnson out for the year, do they know they need both these guys to run a little bit in order to have a semblance of a ground game? Because you, you need about 200 yards on the ground a game to win um, in that ballpark. And you can't just get that from Anthony Grant. You need those quarterbacks to contribute, and you probably need Quentin Ives or Emmett Johnson as well. And um, you take out Irvin and Johnson, that's a big dent to getting to 200 that they've got to figure out here uh, moving forward. Does allow Anthony Grant to uh, to be the man, and, and he's shown us before he's certainly capable if he uh, hangs on to the football. Yeah, Anthony Grant, I think, responded. He looked good running the ball, um, and I, he's got just that opening shake and wiggle that the other guys didn't have, um, the ability to make the first person miss when the blocking's not there. And that a lot of times can be the difference between a one-yard gain and a four-yard gain, and that matters in a football game. So Anthony Grant, I thought, really, um, you know, bounced back strong, especially after being benched um, a week ago and and not seeing a single snap against Colorado. Uh, That was a real promising thing for Anthony Grant. You were at the press conference this week when Coach Rule made that announcement. Did did the win just kind of go out of the room when, when he announced that two out of his three running backs were out for the rest of the year? I'll be honest, like I've been doing this a long time and usually you have a fairly good feel when injuries are like that. And the way the game ended, it was really downplayed. I mean, Ramir Johnson didn't, I mean, he's kind of battled injuries for most of his career and Gabe Irvin Jr. spoke in the post-game press conference. So I don't think anybody would have imagined both these young men would have season ending surgeries. Um, you know, maybe one of them, but to, to lose them both, it's been a long time since Nebraska suffered that kind of blow at a position, you know, that quickly. And you go back to even the spring, AJ Allen transferred to Miami. Um, So, you know, you never have enough. There's always like, how do you get to play all these guys? Well, you never can have enough. We've learned that now look at the receiver room. They're down to basically three guys that can play at a high level, trying to get other guys ready. The running backs room down is down to one with experience and the quarterback room last week only had one fully healthy quarterback, Heinrich Harburg. Today on Husker Chat, we're joined by Sean Callahan of Husker Online as we talk Husker football. Sean, what impressed you the most about Heinrich Harburg? I was impressed with how he it didn't look like the game was too big for him. And once he kind of settled in, he, he did a good job of making the plays that you need to make to win. Yeah, just his urgency. Um, you know, he went about it as a guy like this might be my only chance I get. I better maximize this opportunity because so much at big time power five college football, let's face it the recruiting rankings or the NIL or the hand-picked guys get the benefit of the doubt. It's really hard for guys like Heinrich Harburg to win a job and get a fair shake just because there's so much um, pressure and things that can happen 
um, throughout a year, but Harburg got his opportunity and he looked like a guy that said, I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to do everything possible to make it. So these coaches think about me as an opportunity or a guy that could be the starter again. I want to ask you about the black shirts. They're off to a tremendous start. Do you, do you attribute this more to scheme or to players or maybe a little bit of both at, at this point, because uh, some guys have certainly uh, stepped up and, and flourishing in what coach white is calling. Well, they're playing a lot of players, and I think that's kept this unit very fresh. Uh, 35 defenders saw action on Saturday. Um, that's about as many as you'll ever see, but 27 of those 35 played 10 or more snaps. I thought that was really notable when you look at how they're playing these guys, how they're rotating these guys. So many players are getting opportunities, and it's also created good culture because so many of these players now feel like they're a part of the success or you go back to a year ago, I mean, there was a game where Colton Feast played like 70 snaps on the D-line. I mean, that's just not going to be a sustainable winning formula. I think that's the difference, though. When you have a brand-new head coach, he's thinking about development, long play, where when you have coaches that are on the hot seat, they're they're coaching to save their job, and they're not really worried about uh, developing players for the next two or three or four years down the road. How about this game on Saturday afternoon against Louisiana Tech? Uh, the Huskers yeah, Louisiana are- Tech's got they- some issues. Uh, their quarterback might be out. I-, I think it's a really favorable matchup for Nebraska playing at home. That stadium, Jason, I mean, when you think about the context of where Nebraska football is right now, not having a winning season since 2016, starting out 0-2, the atmosphere at Memorial Stadium was incredible on Saturday night. And I, I think the look on the coaches' faces and – it's like, man, how did anybody ever mess this up? Like, how, how can you not win here? Like, look at this place. It's unbelievable the amount of support that this program has. There's nowhere in the world like Nebraska, and I truly mean that. We saw that with the volleyball day in Nebraska. We saw it with the football fans and the support, despite the lack of success that's had. Um, so I, I do think the home field is going to be a big advantage. Um, they caught another break with Michigan being a 2:30 game. Not a night game, but that's going to be better for the atmosphere. So uh, two straight weeks at 2.30. Favorable road Friday night game at Illinois. Illinois is kind of a, at a tough spot in their season right now. Um, so they've got an opportunity. I mean, the Big Ten in general right now does not look like a great league other than the top three teams. And Nebraska is only going to play one of those top three teams. All right. Well, it, uh, it's been a while since the Huskers have won two in a row. Hopefully that's Last uh, year, uh, Indiana Rutgers. Yeah, but uh, it, just, it just feels like uh, last Saturday night was exactly what everybody did. Yeah, a great win, um, and now they got to stack another win on top of it. All right. Hey, Sean, as always, we appreciate your time and your insights. Thanks, Jason. That was Sean Callahan of Husker Online, joining us as he does every week for Husker Chat, and it's brought to you by Acres of Work. I'm Jason Jordan.